Hey guys, did you recently get your PSAT score back and are you wondering, does this thing even matter? Or maybe you're taking the PSAT soon and you're wondering, do I need to study for this? What is this anyway? If so, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the importance of the PSAT and whether you should be worried about it or not. My name is Brooke. I've been coaching the PSAT, the SAT, and the ACT for over a decade and a half. I've helped coach students to perfect scores on the PSAT, the SAT, and a couple on the ACT. I've also had kids on our online course get perfect scores, particularly on the ACT exam. You can check out our online courses for the SAT and the ACT at supertutortv.com. I've also written a couple of books for the ACT math section. You can check those out at Amazon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet, and follow us on social. You can find all of our social handles here. And finally, we have a blog that goes with this video. So if you'd rather read instead of watch, you can always check out the blog. Go ahead and check the description and that will take you there. Awesome, awesome, cool. So let's talk PSAT. What is it? Does it matter? What's the whole scoop? So first of all, PSAT is like the preliminary SAT. It's like the pre-SAT, some people call it. And what it's about is seeing if you're ready for the SAT. It's a way to gauge how would you do on an SAT if you took that. They're really super similar tests. They're not identical because the PSAT is slightly shorter. And as I like to say, it's usually a couple of questions easier on the math because they don't expect you to have gotten quite as far into advanced math classes. But otherwise, content-wise, SAT and PSAT are fairly identical. Again, slightly different pacing, slightly shorter tests, the PSAT, and no essay. But otherwise, they're very, very similar. So that's the greatest value of the PSAT, is a practice test for the SAT. But does it matter in any other ways? Will it help you get into college? Well, maybe, but only for a few people. I would say if you're not scoring in the top 5% of scorers naturally on a practice test on the PSAT, you probably don't have to worry about it at all. But what about the top 5%? Should those people worry, and if so, about what? Well, if you are scoring in the top percentiles on this exam, you could qualify for several awards and honors. The most notable is the National Merit Scholarship Competition. What is that? Well, it's a scholarship competition in which you enter just by taking the PSAT. It's really easy. If you're a junior in the United States and you have to be a junior, you can't enter as a sophomore, sorry sophomores. You enter this competition when you take the PSAT and it's pretty automatic entering it. And then they look at your score and if your score is high enough, boom, you are invited to be a National Merit semifinalist or you can be honored as a National Merit Committed student. There's about 50,000 students overall who are generally honored in those categories. 34,000 of them become committed students and the other 16,000 become semifinalists in the National Merit Scholarship Competition. How do you get a scholarship then? Well, that cohort of 16,000 students then gets whittled down to 15,000 students after filling out applications, proving that you actually get A's in school for the most part and verifying your score with a second test, usually an ACT or an SAT. So that's one thing you can get. You can also get a badge of honor. What kind of badges of honor? Well, a couple of things. One, you can get a national merit commended status, and that's just a pretty certificate. You don't necessarily get any scholarship money from that, but it's kind of a cool bragging rights kind of thing that you can put on your college application. So that's cool. That being said, if you don't have that, it doesn't preclude you from going to a top university. The actual SAT and the actual ACT are what matter the most. So do not freak out if you had a bad day on PSAT day. Do not freak out if your school keeps canceling it because of COVID and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to go to Stanford because I didn't take the PSAT. Stop worrying. It will be okay. You don't need a PSAT score to go to a top school. It certainly is a nice little badge of honor, but you don't need it. And you can have that commended student status or that finalist status, and those are good, but it's not the end of the world, okay? Now, the other thing that I will note, though, is some of you who are looking at this, because this is a merit-based scholarship program, it's not need-based, some of you might wonder, well, is this going to pay my way at Harvard if I get a great PSAT score? Am I going to get to go to Harvard for free? The answer is probably not. Most of the scholarships that are attached to the National Merit Program tend to be state schools, and they tend not to be what I call like tier one or ranked one through 10 kind of schools. They tend to be ranked a little bit lower. You might find some schools that are top 50 for sure that are certainly great institutions. You're gonna find a lot of state and local universities. You also might find some other kinds of scholarships that could be applied to Harvard or what have you, but just know that you're probably not gonna get a full ride to like a top one through five or one through 10 ranked university through the National Merit Program. So if you're feeling really bad about yourself because you're like, ugh, I know I didn't qualify for the National Merit Scholarship Competition, darn it, but I still wanna go to Princeton and I'm still gonna get that SAT score up. Cool, you're probably fine. 
It's not something that you really have to worry about because it's not like you just lost out on a full ride to Princeton. Most of the scholarships for really top universities are going to be not merit-based, but need-based. So if you have need, they're going to look at your need, and if you get in, they're going to meet as much of your need as they can. That's generally how top schools work, and most top schools are also need-blind. Not all of them, but most of them, and so that's just another factor. One more thing of note, there are four College Board National Recognition programs that target underrepresented groups that you may qualify for by scoring highly on your PSAT. The first is an African-American recognition program that's done in partnership with the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Then there is an indigenous recognition program done in conjunction with Indigenous Education, Inc. There is a rural recognition program that is based on the zip code of the high school that you attend, and it's in partnership with Jack Kent Cook Foundation. And finally, there's a Hispanic recognition program that is done in conjunction with the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. These programs also have a little bit of a lower bar in terms of qualification, and those bars, so to speak, are set regionally. Though it's a little bit harder to track all of the data in terms of the cutoffs for each of these programs in every region, we did come across the cutoffs for the Hispanic recognition program for the class of 2021. So from this chart, you get a little bit of an idea, the kind of range that might qualify you depending on the year. Note that these aren't actually scholarship programs, but that doesn't mean that some institutions will not recognize the particular awards. In fact, some particular institutions may give scholarships based on your status as one of these types of scholars. Again, though, you're not going to be in this pool where 50% of the people nominated are automatically going to get a scholarship. It's just an award. It's not the end of the world, again, if you don't get it. At the end of the day, what matters most is your SAT score and your ACT score. And the good news is you all have time for that if you just finish your PSAT. So it's going to be okay. So now let's talk about the other 95% or 99% of the world. What about them? For you, does the PSAT matter? And my answer is, well, it does matter, but it just matters in the sense that it gives you a gauge of how you're doing. And it can help you prepare for the SAT more effectively. It can also help you choose between the SAT and the ACT if you want to take an ACT practice test, and then you can kind of compare all your scores together and use it as an awesome tool to gauge how you might do. Now, I know some of you might recognize that the PSAT is on a scale out of 1520, and the SAT is on a scale out of 1600, and that can be a little bit confusing. And I think the reason that the College Board created that different scale is what was happening because a PSAT is a smaller sample size than an SAT, is on the previous PSAT, I was getting some students who might even get a perfect score in the PSAT, and then they would think, oh, my SAT is going to be just fine, and then their score would sink a little bit because it was a smaller sample size on the old test. Well, now they've just automatically made that score lower to hopefully motivate you to think that you have to study more in order to get the SAT score that you actually want. So if you go around and you take your PSAT score and you try to compare it to an SAT score, it's not going to line up exactly. I have by hand created a concordance table based on the user percentiles of the PSAT and the SAT. Now these aren't exact because most people do a little bit of prep between their PSAT and their SAT. So there might be some discrepancy there, but overall, you can see sort of how these percentiles work their way out. If you've got a certain PSAT, what's your expected SAT score if you prep a little bit in between? And is that enough for you? Or do you really want big gains? And are you going to be able to get the gains that you want? So use this as a tool. You can check out our What's a Good PSAT Score video or the blog post that goes with that if you wanna see like what kind of colleges are going to be responsive to the score that you got on the PSAT and whether you want to try to work to improve that score. But in terms of does the PSAT matter? Well, yes, it matters because it's helping you on your journey of figuring out how do I get the most awesome scores possible to get into all the colleges that I dream of. But at the same time, it's not anything that you have to worry about because it's just for practice. No college will ever see your exact PSAT score. So don't worry too much about your PSAT score. If it's not what you want it to be, use that as a wake-up call to study and to get the score that you want. And how do you study? Well, you've come to a great place because we have lots of videos here totally for free on our YouTube channel on how to prepare for the PSAT. We can help you if you want to self-study, and we can help you if you want to do an online course or if you want tips on books. We've got all of that here on our channel. So be sure to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to watch more videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and I hope to see you in another video soon.